My name is Emilio. Today we are talking about backups and replication. The differences between the two and why you should be utilizing both backups and replication to some extent in every organization. So every single business needs to have a adequate system in place to manage backups of your data. As a business, you cannot afford to lose data in some instances. In some instances, if you lose significant amounts of data, there could be a significant financial implication to your business. In worst case scenarios, if you don't have proper backups in place and you lose all of your systems and you cannot recover your systems, you could potentially go out of business. It's very important to have backups that are accurate, backups that are done regularly, and backups that are not only done on site, but also sent off site in case your on site infrastructure is destroyed or is unavailable due to a disaster. These are backups that are going to be taking place preferably every single day. This is backups of your servers and perhaps backups of your workstations and your end user computers as well. This is backing up all of the data to a particular location every single day. Backups can be of the entire system, but can also be granular as well, which essentially means that you are backing up the file level, the folder level uh, files in a system also. So depending on the technology that you use, you could have backup agents running on individual systems, which essentially communicate to a backup server, and then that is controlling your entire backup fleet. It manages your, your scheduling, what groups, what servers, what systems you wanna backup when, how often, if they wanna be incremental, if they wanna be full, um, really the, the type of data as well. If you've got, for example, a SQL, a SQL server, an exchange server, a SharePoint server, they may have independent different types of agents required to be able to back up this data. And then likewise, to be able to restore this data also. Other systems can integrate directly into your hypervisor. So we mentioned VMware Citrix and Microsoft Hyper-V. Integrate directly into your, um, your virtualization environment interrogate all of your VMs and do a full, you know, file-based, um, snapshot-based backup directly on your hypervisor, communicating directly into your backup system. Daily backups generally will be called incremental backups. Essentially what incremental backups are is a full backup will take place. The first, very first backup will be a full backup, backs up the entire system. And then a daily incremental will be put in place potentially backs up the changes that have been made since the last full or the last incremental backup. So if you have you know, daily incremental backups, if I have an incremental backup on the Wednesday and I also had one on the Tuesday, the Wednesday will only back up the changes from the Tuesday the day before, which backed up the changes from the incremental on the Monday, which may have backed up all the changes since the first full, which happened perhaps on a Saturday or on a Sunday. So daily incrementals then move into weekly full backups. So the general good practice is to have a weekly full backup, at least one every week we do a full clean slate backup of all of your systems. Uh, so this can include all of your servers, and again, your workstations, if you do have that system in place. So you've got daily incrementals every single day of the week, except for one, which you differentiate, it will be a full backup. That could happen on a Friday, or on a Saturday, or on a Sunday. Whatever day you choose has to be a day that has had the most changes within that whole week, and you determine this is the last day of the week, essentially, that I wanna do a backup, and that's gonna be a full backup, which is a full system state, a full you know, snapshot of your entire server, for example, happens once a week. From your weeklies, you then also can include monthly and annual backups as well. A monthly backup essentially will be a full backup as well, as well as your annual backup could be a full backup. Some companies do it differently, but you could actually have, you know, you've got a four, let's say four sets of weekly backups or five sets of weekly backups in a month. One of those, perhaps the last one at the end of the month, the last weekly full could be turned into your monthly full or you could set up a new job to do a completely new backup, which is a monthly full. Same deal with your annual. Your annual could be perhaps the last backup of the year in a month, the last full backup, which could be December, the last monthly backup in December, which is could be the last weekly full in December, becomes your annual. And then that then goes off site and is retained for a next amount of time. So if you've got systems, if you've got workstations, you've got your end user computers, your desktops, your laptops, they could contain business data that requires backups. 
So there's two really two big things that you can either do. One, you allow your staff to run business data on their own computers, but then you have to have some sort of a mechanism where that data is then backed up to a server, which is backed up by a backup system, and then it's sent you know, to a backup repository of some sort. So you can actually have tool software installed on every person's computer that automatically copies all the data from their computer to a server, for example, or a storage device. The alternate, which is generally the way that most businesses will do it, is a user will have access to a number of shares. They'll have access to you know, a file server, they'll have access to a H drive, which is like a home drive, which is their own personal space. And the recommendation would be that staff do not save business data locally on their computer, rather they're saving it in these shared drives, in these server drives, uh, which in turn then have the software for backing up in the background, and that way it's all managed that way. So you're not actually putting an extra piece of software on every computer to manage backups of those workstations. So you're either gonna have on-site, an off-site, or a combination of the two in terms of where the repository of those backups are going to be living. If they're on-site, You've got a number of servers, a number of systems, and they're going to be backed up to some form of media. And that could be a combination of uh, another server with a lot of disk space. It could be a storage device such as a SAN or a NAS. Uh, it could be even external hard drives if you want to go down that method. Um, it could be tape libraries. Uh, you could have tapes such as LTO tapes, which are then routinely um, shuffled around and they are then saved on site in premise within your organization or within your data center. If you lose that entire comms room, that entire server room or the data center is unavailable, um, then you've lost not only your production servers, but you've also lost the backup systems which are also residing in the same location. So what you do is additional to on-site backups, you also have off-site backups. These are backups that not only reside on site, but are also copied or moved to off-site locations. So if we use these, te these terms again, these technologies, if you're backing up to another server, this server could perhaps be at an alternate location. If you're backing up to a SAN or a NAS, you could be backing up to that, and then in turn that could be replicated to a alternate location. This, this server or NAS could then be backed up to another server NAS somewhere else. Uh, you could also then back up to tapes. So we mentioned LTO tapes. So you've got LTO 5, LTO 6, LTO 7 type of tapes, which have a certain amount of terabytes loaded on each tape. You then have the backups copied onto these tapes, and then these tapes go through like a weekly, uh, daily, or a weekly cycle where they are sent off-site to a third-party company, and then you have the confidence that this data is off-site. The same deal, a lot of smaller businesses will have an external hard drive, they plug into a, to their server, data gets backed up to that, and then it's somebody's, somebody's responsibility to take that hard drive off-site to make sure that the data is safe off-site if something on-premise happens. Uh, the other option is to, of course, save it onto the cloud. There are a lot of cloud-based backup solutions out there we can have all of your backups running off to the cloud and they are essentially then a, a off-site, um, you know, they're, they're saved in an off-site location if they are on the cloud. You need to consider what your retention requirements are. How long are you going to keep data? So this is really going to determine, uh, be determined by the type of data that you have got. So, you know, certain images or certain videos may not be required to be retained for seven years but for, you know, financial data, data that deals with human resources or admin, things that are, you know, have an audit requirement or a legal requirement for you as a business to retain may require a higher retention period of one, seven, 10 years, or even infinite, depending on the requirement. So really the important thing is, yes, not only to have backups and replication in place, but also have a plan in place so that you know how long you should be retaining this data for legal requirements, for auditing requirements, financial data needs to be retained for certain amounts of time, for tax purposes. So really determine your retention periods depending on the data that you've got and how long you need to be keeping this data. The other technology is replication. So what replication is, is you're actually replicating the data from one location to another, generally on top of your backups. So you'd have your backups running every single day as normal, but then you'd have systems in place that can do full replication of servers or storage to alternate locations or even into the same location so that in the event of a system going down, 
You don't have to manually go and build the systems again and then restore the data one by one from, the, you know, from those backups to their systems to get them back to the original state. So an example of replication is I could have a server built here and I could have all of the contents of that server being replicated to an alternate server that has some storage. So if this server goes down, this server can just be spun up and then you're good to go. Um, of course, this does not replace backups because if you lose both, then you're in trouble. The other thing that a lot of companies will do, a lot of the, the generally the medium, larger enterprise type of businesses, is they could have full SAN or NAS replication. So this is the NAS or the SAN, which is essentially a storage device containing multiple disks. You've got the backups running onto this device, and then you've got systems in place that do a full copy of the SAN and NAS data to an alternate location. So a good example would be a SAN, for example, has what's called LUNs, so the groups of disks configured into pools and configured into LUNs, which are logical unit numbers. Um, they're just bunches of disks with data. You can have up a, a, a separate system, another SAN sitting at another location, and then have those LUNs replicated from point A to point B. But if your SAN goes down, you've got another SAN to spin up. Again, that could be on-premise, it could be off-site, preferably off-site. And then all you do is you just point your service to this new SAN and then you're good to go. You can also have systems in place, there are a lot of technologies available where you can have not only SAN and server replication, but you can have that replication spun up in the cloud, consistently replicated up, and then in the event of a disaster where your on-premise data goes down, you can just spin up VMs essentially, you can spin up this data directly in the cloud and spring up these servers directly in the cloud and still be operational while you're in the process of restoring your data. Now, a lot of this technology, if you're talking about replication specifically, uh, you want to use a terminology called CDP, which is continuous data protection. So you don't want to make sure, like your backups, for example, um, are going to be done every day or every week or every month. CDP as the name suggests, is continuous data protection. So it's going to be continuously replicating from one location to another. So you've got backups for your dailies, but then your data is being, being continually replicated between SANs, from, from your SAN up to the cloud, continuously. So that in the event of a disaster, in the event of data being lost, you really do not lose a whole day's worth of work if you have to go back to your daily backups because this data is continually up to date. So there you go, that is my overview. I really do hope, hope that you found this helpful. There's a lot of content to talk about and we could be talking about this for a very long time. But look, I'd love it if you commented below. Let me know your thoughts. I would also love it if you subscribe to my channel and uh, we will see you next time. So if you found that video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel, Digital by Computing, just on the button there for more videos.